Today I want to look at a classical interference problem. It's the one where you have two glass plates like this. At one end the two glass plates are touching, and at the other end you've inserted say a human hair, or you've produced a little bit of spacing on one end. So it introduces this wedge, this air gap, which is in a wedge shape. So you know the length and the spacing here. And I'm going to consider some monochromatic incident light that has a wavelength of 500 nanometers. And let's look at the interference pattern. Now the reason you're going to have interference is because, well, if you look at some of the reflections that are going to happen over here, and also the difference in path that introduces by introducing this little spacing on one end, you introduce a difference in path, therefore you could have conditions where you have constructive and destructive interference. So one thing to remember is you always have uh, constructive interference when there's a path difference D, which equals to N times the wavelength, and N can be any number. This typically leads to constructive interference. However, for this problem, you do have to be a little bit careful. This here, the equation I just wrote, doesn't consider any type of reflection. We know that reflections can produce phase shifts in waves. All right, so let's consider two particular light rays. Let's consider the one that gets reflected off the bottom surface of the top plate and the light ray that gets reflected off the top surface now of the bottom plate. And let's look at the overall phase with respect to the incident one. So I have an incident ray. Once it gets transmitted, that transmitted light ray is in phase with the first one, and then there is a reflection. Now when you reflect from a high index, which is glass to air, that doesn't produce a phase shift for the reflected light. So there's no phase shift here, and then that light ray gets transmitted, so there's no overall phase shift right here between both of those. All right, let's now consider what happens with the light that was transmitted now in this air gap region. So it will continue and that's going to, part of it's going to reflect off the top surface. Now when you go from a low index, which is air, to a high index, this produces a phase shift of 180 degrees. So this light over here, that is, here I've zoomed in on the picture here. So this guy over here that's been reflected off that bottom surface, this is out of phase by 180 degrees with respect to the incident orange light right here. All right, and now that gets transmitted into glass. Transmission doesn't produce any phase shifts. And also, this other transmission doesn't produce any phase shifts. So at the end, this light ray is out of phase by 180 degrees. So what does that mean? Well, that means that both of these are out of phase. Well, how do we write down a condition now for interference? So that means now that if... The difference in path, which in this case, if I look at the zoom here, I'm going to call this height here y, which is approximately uh, where these light rays are actually going to go through. So our condition now becomes 2 times y, because this light ray goes down and then goes back up. If I write this as n times lambda, in this case, this will be the condition for destructive interference. And it's destructive because, although this is typically the condition for constructive interference, if you're just looking at the path difference, in this case, because of this extra reflection, this extra phase shift, this here's the condition for destructive interference. The condition for a bright fringe becomes this one now. And this will be constructive interference. So you automatically see, if we consider any one of these equations, let's call this one, let's call this equation two, that any one of these, depending on where you are on this wedge position, there are certain conditions where you're going to satisfy this equation. Again, n is simply a, an integer that can be equal to zero, one, two, three, and so forth. There's gonna be some value of the thickness or the separation between these two plates that's equal to the wavelength. And whenever I get twice the path difference equal to the wavelength, I'm going to get destructive interference or I'm going to get a dark fringe. So let's now relate that because I really want to know the spacing between dark fringes. And the spacing is really, it's not the vertical uh, separation between the plates, it's how far it is from the end. And how far it is between two successive dark fringes or two successive bright fringes. So let's consider this uh, triangle over here. If I call this angle over here theta, 
Well, you can write down an expression, right? We have tangent of theta, and we have similar triangles there. We have the smaller triangle. The smaller triangle is going to have a, you can write something like this, y over x. And that there also has to be equal to, well, it's the same triangle, except now if I go all the way to the end of the glass plates, I'm going to get h, the spacing, divided by the overall length. So that leads to an expression for y in terms of x. So I get h over l multiplied by x, and that's equal to the spacing at any position x. Now if I go back to my equation 1, if you go back to equation 1 where we're going to have dark fringes, instead of writing 2 times y, I have an expression now. This is h over l multiplied by x equals to n lambda. This is my condition for destructive interference for this problem. So at the end, x is equal to, just be a little bit careful here, n times lambda l divided by 2 times uh, the spacing h. Now for this problem, these are just numbers. I have my wavelength, which is 500 nanometers. That's the wavelength in air. That's also the wavelength that goes in here because I have air separating both glass plates. I have the overall length, which is 10 centimeters, and two times the height. You could substitute the numbers in your calculator, and what you end up getting here is 1.25 millimeters, and all of this gets multiplied by my value n. And let me put a little subscript here for xn. So these are all the positions of x that are going to give me dark fringes or destructive interference. It also means, so if you substitute zero in here, zero, you're gonna get x equals to zero, you get a dark fringe there. If I substitute n equals to one here, you're gonna get a dark fringe at 1.25 millimeters. Every 1.25 millimeters, you get a dark fringe. So the spacing now between interference fringes is simply gonna be equal to 1.25 millimeters. All right, hope you like the problem. Uh, this is kind of a standard interference fringe problem. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. If there's anything you don't understand, just leave a comment. I'll make sure to get back to you.